today, I would like to take you on a journey. A journey that few of us experience, but all can achieve. I'd like you to suspend your thoughts and allow your mind to expand into a space that allows miracles to happen. I ask you to quiet your mind and simply allow what I'm about to say to enter into your feeling mind where you will simply understand and not criticize. We went to central New Hampshire several years ago for a weekend of rest away from the constant hustle and noise of my surgical practice. It was a beautiful day with a sunny sky and a clear view of the mountains and lakes. We settled along the shore of one of the many lakes in the area for a day of reading and relaxation. I found myself in a contemplative mood, and as I sat along the shoreline, my mind could wander, and in time my sight became blurred and my world changed forever. I startled. Why me? I asked myself after what seemed like minutes to me, but were hours to my wife. I left the beach that day, not myself, but altered in some way that at the time I did not understand. What was it that changed me and made me change my thoughts to those of the spirit and my relationship with it? Writing Eben's World opened my eyes to my life's purpose. As far as this series is concerned, it marks the real beginning of the study we are here to undertake. Eben's World marks the opening to spirit that we all can appreciate. You will find my books are written on several levels. First, there's the storyline, which was my contribution. Second, spiritual poetry, which was Eben's contribution. And third, a hidden energy for healing, calming, and awakening the reader to a possibility, the possibility of sharing between souls. The words in Eben's world will sound familiar to those of you who have listened to the audio tape. They are the words from this tape, which I produced several years ago, altered very little only to fit better into the story. I felt the need at the time to create a storyline to further amplify the meaning of its words. So, who is Eben? Eben has been my spiritual guide for over 35 years. Why did he come into my life? Truthfully, I don't know the answer and probably never will. I do feel that we all have guides and angels that help us through our lives moment by moment. If this part of the series sounds strange or weird, let me assure you that I am an ordinary person who simply experienced an extraordinary series of contacts that led me to this point in my life. Stay with me for a while and you will begin to see why this connection changed my life and can present to you the possibility of life change. I found many answers to many questions and was given many insights into how to live my life. Eben's world began my journey in earnest, and during this time together, I'd like to just share some of that with you. So, let's begin. Do you feel it is possible to see through the fabric of time into another reality? Well, Eben gave me that opportunity, but also raised a lot of questions in my mind. Questions like, where did I go during that split in time? What made time stand still? Tell me, how would you react to such an encounter with a split in time? What do you think it would feel like? Could you put yourself in my place? What would be the payoff for allowing this to happen to you? What would you expect to find? Well, let's talk about what I did find. Let's take the next few minutes to explore some of these answers and hear what I heard during my many hours of meditation. First, I felt a deep connection with spirit is possible for anyone at any time. All that is required is for you to learn to quiet your mind in order to hear the Spirit's call. Spirit speaks in whispers, and being quiet and still is a prerequisite to understanding. Each of us will uncover the time and place for an opening to the Spirit's presence. You know, I found it really interesting that what for me was an opening occurred during a time when I least expected it. 
but most needed it. I do not put pressure on myself or on spirit because any attempt at forcing will cause a connection to fail. I accepted the possibility of life change. I was at a place in my life where I was open to the possibility of change and had relinquished my control over the outcome of that change. So many people become rigid in their search and prevent any contact with spirit because they deep inside are not open to the invitation and block it from occurring. For I discovered four initial teachings to allow an awakening to occur. First, each person must find their own way to uncover the spirit in their lives. You see, there are no one-way path or one-way philosophy that will ensure your connection. There are many paths that lead to the spirit, and each is shared and valid. Two, your journey begins when you first open yourself, quiet your mind in order to hear, and listen to the spirit's voice. Three, once you hear the spirit's call, it is important to accept this call and then change your life to show your connection to the world. Four, once you make a connection, you need to continually seek and search out the place where the spirit dwells. I call this space the soul space. It is a place of wonder, magical beauty, and makes you aware that you are more than your body and more than your personality. It makes you aware that you are a soul that carries within the genes of the Creator. Once found, you need to leave this materialistic world and begin your quest toward the spirit in your life. So what is this soul space I talk about? Once you enter the soul space, you can feel and sense the presence of spirit. You will find vast amounts of knowledge that can be used to change your world. Entering the soul space allows you to feel the spirit's love radiating all around you. Once you encounter this space, you will uncover some responsibilities that you never saw before. First, you will change your perception of life and will begin to encourage everyone you know to find their soul space. You also will notice an enlightened feeling that permits you to live in peace. You will become a part of the Spirit's light and thus shine this light onto everything you do or say. You will learn love, to care, learn mercy and compassion. You will be given the gift of seeing your life and the magnificent miracle it is. You will choose to surrender to the Spirit's love and become it in your life's teachings so you may become at peace. Each word given to me came without any stress or strain. Each kept me spellbound and I found myself eagerly seeking more. In order to receive more information, it would be necessary for an awakening to occur. This awakening would allow me to see clearly and understand the content of each word. How would this awakening appear? First, you need to listen carefully to the words you will hear, but particularly pay attention to the experiences given to you in life. You will use these words and experiences to create a reflection in every word, action, and movement in your life. Second, the experiences of friends, relatives, and acquaintances will give you the answers to some of the dilemmas you face each day. What are the results of this? Well, working together by noticing each other's actions and words will create a more caring soul. It will create harmony and peace and allow a stillness to life unseen before. Sharing your soul space will create change First, simply by being who you truly are. Second, by actively participating in change, you will alter the course of history. Third, you will bring new life into all souls by listening to the song of your soul. So what did Eben tell me about my soul? He said, your soul is wise, all-knowing. Your soul has a bank of knowledge you can use during times of trial or difficulty. You can confront problems before they arise. 
If you listen to your soul, you will be amazed at the knowledge you will uncover. You will see how beautiful you are within and will become a witness to the enormous change from the time when the soul was not present in your life. It is important for you to become the song of your soul and by doing this, become blessed above all others in your world. You will see how great you truly are. He continued, Your soul is the answer and the solution to all your problems. All you need to do is listen to its words during the quiet moments of your life. I found other insights were placed within the story that profoundly changed my life. Even talked about how the Spirit's beauty was all around me. He stressed the importance of showing others my desires because you can use their strength and help in reaching your goals. Your souls overlap each other and are each a part of the whole, and as such, if we know each other's direction, we can affect change in the world around us. Your mind, your body, your soul, each is a part of the eternal whole. However, you must listen to your soul first, then consider with your mind, then proceed with your body. Even emphasized how everything starts with your soul, then becomes translated by your mind and gets placed into the world by your body. Everything he said made sense to me, except I realized few people actually listen to each other. Few take the time to know each other. You see, it, it is by listening to others that you will obtain a life of greatness because you will become present in the moment and Spirit's presence will surround you. It was at this point that Eben's world moved into the area of awareness and presented wisdom from the other Inunus present at the gathering. Do you remember Froman? Well, he was the first to speak. His focus was on the greatest secret known. He said, The presence within is the greatest secret known to us. Spirit is in each of our lives, every moment. Its reflection is within. He encouraged everyone to listen to their hearts and know the truth of spirit. This allowed you to understand the need and the purpose of your life's direction. He was a man of encouragement. Encouragement of yourself, but also encouragement in the need for others to obtain love and caring. He simply said, Each of you needs love. Each of you needs caring. Each needs the feeling of belonging to a great cause. He then encouraged everyone to show love and caring. Encouraged everyone to foster freedom and contentment and become at rest and at peace. The story moves around the fire, and each member had their turn to express their wisdom. Some talked about the importance of their soul space. They told of the importance of listening, because its voice will become the director of your path. Also, they noted the importance of knowing that this location is where the special bond is found between yourself and your Creator. As the book progresses, we learn so many other things. We learn of the beauty of the universe, how enormous and grand it is. But we also learn how small we are compared to it, and how we are to use our position in connection with spirit to create change. As the conversation continued around the circle, each member spoke of the wisdom of the soul space, and how by entering the space for rest and discharge of stress, you can allow new information to lead you further along your path. I remember Wanso as he danced and approached the fire. Some of his last words truly expanded my awareness. He said, These are the things to remember daily. Walk gently in the Spirit's hands. Love everyone you see and allow them to know of this love. 
Allow them to see the caring person you are and how to become centered in the wonder of the Spirit's love. You see, each of us is a child of God. Each of us is a special soul. Look into each other's eyes with love and know the soul within is pure and just. Then contact their soul with love and teach them to become the love you see. The small gathering of Inunus were presenting their life's teachings in concise terms that anyone could understand. The energy in the room was explosive as the meeting continued. After each person spoke, they placed a small packet into the fire, and by doing this allowed their wisdom to escape into the world around them. As each spoke, the accumulation of knowledge continued. Many phrases created imprints in my mind in a capsule form. Many caused me to feel each word. Many caused my world to change and I could see and feel love overtake my life. Here are a few of my favorite quotes. You are without concern for tomorrow because you realize that tomorrow is in the Spirit's hands. Another. Know the universe is a place of peace and a place that means you no harm. Understand that life is special and that death is not an ending but only the beginning of new life. You are present in this world in order to perfect your being and to grow in the direction of your dreams. You are to grow to your maximum, to the very limits of the universe. And there is more. He said, change in the world begins with you. You must forgive yourself and forgive all about you. Encourage each person with the hope of eternity and the news of the coming of a new awakening. Encourage the soul. Encourage it to become fully awakened. Because it is through the assimilation of the soul's information that we become awakened. You see, the soul is the key to happiness. Time limits the number of quotes I can use today, but I think you get the flavor of the messages. Eben's world laid out before my eyes a new world based on principles that all of us can pursue. Eben's last words in this book were profound and really set my new path. He said, Once the door to your soul has opened widely, you will not be satisfied with the small amount of knowledge you once knew. You will search each moment for a continued source of wisdom and will become a messenger to others of the love you have found. You will be contacted by guides and spirits of unrivaled beauty. You will become aware of realms thought impossible. You will know the boundlessness of the universe by the thoughts of the universe and will allow the presence of the spirit within. It was this encounter that changed my outlook on the world and the need for Spirit's love in each of our hearts. Our world appears as disconnected at times. People fail to help each other. They fail to recognize each other's love and tend to live separate lives. We think our world is a world gone wrong and that there is no chance for change we fail to see that we can affect change in our world. We can begin that change at home, in ourselves, alone. We can begin by changing our inner world and through this action begin to transform the world of others. We must begin to realize that we are all interconnected. We are all one. By changing our beliefs and thoughts, we can create a ripple through the cosmos that affects all of creation. We can begin this change now, together, forever. What is important is to begin now, together. Eben's world may sound like a world of impossibilities, but just think for a moment. Communications is the one thing we lack among ourselves and among people of differing ethnic, religious, and political views. 
if each of us awaken to the principles found in this parable and then spread them like a ripple in a pond, we could begin a transformation that would in time change the very fabric of our world. I then ask you a simple question. Why are you here today? Is it to learn new ways of thinking and apply them in our everyday life? If that is so, then this is where you begin. Your soul is the answer. Your soul is the container in which the spirit dwells. Your soul gives you all the answers you need. It is up to you to surrender yourself to the spirit's love and thereby start the change to become the words and actions of your soul. This is how we change our world. We change it simply one soul at a time. I thank Eben, a spirit of love, for all his help and continued advice along my life's path. He taught me what it means to be alive, guided by spirit and awakened by its love. I wish you peace along your journey, joy amid the quiet moments, acceptance where just a moment before non-acceptance was seen, and love, the glue of the universe, and the answer to all wounds. Namaste.